Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to Generation Z Gadgets and for this video we're going to be talking about The Boring Company. So uh, despite its name, it's actually a very interesting subject to talk about and it's really related to technology and sort of the future and just in general we can expect as a, as a collective planet in the near future, in the somewhat near future. So basically in this video we're going to be talking about everything you need to know at least on the surface of the boring company and just like covering every single aspect of this topic that you will need to know if you want to talk to someone about it if you want to read more about it just so that you understand what is going on out there so without any further ado let's get into today's video oh oh that's gonna be on camera so first of all what is the boring company well the boring company is an infrastructure and tunnel construction company which was founded by Musk in late 2016 and what he cites as the inspiration for this project was LA traffic issues and it's obviously not just unique to LA it's pretty much an issue every single developed country around the world so basically they they create a lot of tunnels and the other infrastructure they haven't really focused much on but the Boring Company has pretty much solely for the most part been focused on tunnel construction and why tunnels? Well. They're basically thought of as 3D roads in um, the Boring Company's eyes and they're said to be the best solution for alleviating this traffic. And of course we already have tunnels in the world so we know a lot about tunnels already. So when the Boring Company was sort of conceptualizing this, they were thinking should they go up or should they go down? And at first they actually considered this, they were thinking about uh, making flying cars a, a reality and actually having floating highways, levitating highways or like really tall highways where cars would go. Or the other option, because that just wasn't feasible, was to go down. And basically what they mean by that is they're going to create underground tunnels and they're not just regular tunnels that run on the surface, they're going to be underground tunnels similar to how we have subways now. They're basically going to be like that but for cars, for other public transit instead, high, high speed public transit which we'll talk about in just a second. So they talk about a lot of benefits of tunnels. The first is that tunnels are weatherproof, essentially. So there's no practical limit to how many layers of tunnels can be built. And also it really won't be affected by rain and thunder and things like that. Whereas on the surface, and of course, in the, definitely in the air, you definitely will have that issue. Another benefit of tunnel construction is that it does not interfere with the outside world. So basically, if you've got other additional tunnels being constructed or just anything going on in the tunnels will be practically noiseless to the outside community and that's one of the best things about subways but as we'll talk about a little bit later in this video this project is very different from subways there will also be no dividing communities with lanes and barriers the same way you have on the surface with roads and highways and then finally it will be a safe place for earthquakes tunnels actually and just underground areas in general are some of the safest places you can go when there's an earthquake because while that's happening on the surface, you're pretty much safe underneath. Actually, when I, when I was in Korea just last month, um, I did notice that a lot of the, there were a lot of signs um, outside of subway stations saying that subway stations are either bomb shelters or earthquake shelters as well. And another benefit of tunnels, which the Born Company didn't cite, but definitely is true, that it's a def definite good place to hide uh, if, if bombs are ever dropped on where you live. So in order for this project to actually be feasible, uh, the Born Company has said that the tunnels must be reduced to a tenth of their current cost in order to build a mass of them across the globe and definitely across the country. Some ways they're going to reduce the cost, and reduce the cost, and reduce the cost, and reduce the cost, and reduce the cost, is they're going to reduce the tunnel diameter. It can accommodate less accommodating cars, slightly smaller cars, but it won't accommodate things like big trucks or monster trucks or anything like that. And they're also going to increase the tunnel boring machine, which is the thing that actually creates uh, the tunnels themselves. They're going to increase its speed and automate it, so it's going to be a lot more productive. And there's been a lot of questions raised recently about whether this whole project is environmentally unfriendly. And I'm here to tell you today that it's not actually. It's not environmentally unfriendly, meaning it is friendly. <laughs> so. Um, basically, uh, the Boring Company will recycle the earth and the dirt that is excavated uh, when they're building the tunnels and they're going to recycle them into materials that can be used uh, to build additional structures and pavers. So instead of shipping them off-site to a disposal area, 
they're instead going to just recycle them into components that can be used over again. So they've got three main products, The Boring Company, so far, and while none of these are really developed yet, they have started to become a reality, and there is signs of actual things happening. The first product is the loop transportation system. So this is comprised of two tunnels, a bunch of stations, uh, ventilation slash exit shafts, loop transports, uh, lighting, communications, video, and fire slash life safety. So this basically uh, will accommodate passengers and cargo and it has both spaces for private and public transportation. Private transportation will basically be for either, I'm guessing, really rich people who want to travel alone or also for uh, people who are in their own cars. They will have like certain stations where you can drive in your car uh, through those through that tunnel, through the, those stations, uh, just as you would travel through a tunnel or on a highway or something like that. In that sense, that would be private transportation. And public transportation, you've got the Hyperloop. So this is probably something you've heard about on the news over the past few years. The Hyperloop is going to be their public transit system. And while we, know, while we don't know so much yet, they are building Hyperloops in several cities across America. So uh, expect it to come uh, within the next several years for this to start showing up. It's supposed to be a lot faster than traditional subway cars, so who knows, maybe those will replace it altogether. And I'm gonna mention something later that actually talks about one of the ways that this is already becoming a reality, this replacement of subways. But we'll get into that. MTA, you better watch out, by the way. <laughs> so the second product they have is called a conduit tunnel, and this is basically uh, for convenient maintenance of the tunnels without disrupting the surface world. It's weird to say surface world. I feel like I'm in a sci-fi movie when I say that word. Also, they will be able to fix internal systems more accessibly um, through these conduit tunnels. So while this isn't for mass, the mass use, it's meant more for those engineers and construction workers to be able to work on the tunnels um, through conduit tunnels without you know, sort of disrupting the ongoing loop transportation system and also definitely not disrupting the outside world. And the third is called a water tunnel. And this is pretty much what it sounds like. Uh, but it can, you know, transport other things besides water, of course. And they're boring through uh, the areas that will become water tunnels with TBMs. Those, uh, the boring, what's it called? The tunnel boring machine speed. No, the tunnel boring, boring machine. Yes. So overall, uh, honestly, just like a lot of Musk's projects and companies, this is still very conceptual. Um, too much of it, I'd say, is still conceptual. Although, keep in mind, it's still early. Uh, the company itself was founded just a f two and a half years ago. So there's a lot of stuff that's slated to come out that hasn't come out yet. So there's currently projects going on in LA, Las Vegas, Chicago, Hawthorne, California, DC, and Baltimore. And the two biggest ones that I want to shed light on is number one, uh, the Chicago Express Loop, which will operate the O'Hare uh, Express Public Transit Service. And that honestly is a big deal because actually Chicago Transportation Service Company or whatever has commissioned the Boring Company to, to run those operations and operate and maintain the public transit system. So you might actually start to see uh, some of this boring products. Well, you definitely will eventually see boring products as long as there is this commission going on You will definitely start to see boring company products um, Such as the loop transportation system within the Chicago transportation grid and then the other one is the East Coast loop So this is basically a loop from DC to Baltimore across the entire East Coast and this is honestly really big for people like me who lives in New York You know if I want to get a college uh, I just t take a train or I don't know, it's not even a train, take a loop. Uh, that might become the new word, take a loop down, uh, down, down south or whatever. Honestly, it would be a really, really, really big popular thing that would definitely revolutionize travel across the country. And if they even built them across countries from east to west coast, I don't know how that would work, but if the loop can do it, then so be it. They should definitely get, get on that. So we will see, like I said before, it's only been two and a half years, so there's a lot that's still speculated, and um, honestly, there's just a lot of stuff that uh, we won't know for sure if it will even ever happen. I'd say because it's one of Musk's companies, just like SpaceX and, um, what is that company called? Um, Brain Company, Neuralink, the boring company is going to take a little while to really fully fledge into something that will be used by 
the entire nation. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Um, I hope you liked this video. It was basically, I just tried to encompass everything that you would need to know about The Boring Company, and I think I've covered it pretty well, pretty in depth. Let me know if you guys want any more information. I'll be answering questions in the comment section below. Leave a thumbs up on this video if you enjoyed. Do not leave a thumbs down. If you didn't enjoy it, just click away. Um, or leave a nice comment if you're if you're really into things. Uh, or you can leave a mean comment. Um, I've gotten a couple of those. I don't usually respond to them, but be my guest if you want to be. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching this video, and as always, I'll see you on Friday in the next video. I don't know this, when this video is going to be coming out, so I'll see you in the next video, whenever that may be. Thanks for watching.